Good morning. Today we're going to continue with our study of ancient Roman civilization, but I'd like to review just a tad. If somebody was to ask you the question, what is Rome? How would you answer that? That was the question of last of yesterday's uh, story. Um, we learned about all roads lead to Rome, that Rome was not built in a day. Um, but if you can answer what is Rome, by the end of this unit, you really will have been able to, to capture a lot of what we want you to know. So what is Rome? Well, Rome really is a present day city in the country of Italy. Rome was the place where the ancient Roman civilization began. Rome became an empire that covered large parts of Europe, Asia, and Africa. And Rome represents a group of people with a certain culture and many contributions that have been passed down to us today. So we're going to back up a little bit and we're going to talk about legends. What is a legend? We're going to start with talking about legends because many people believe that there is a legend that tells about how Rome began, the actual city of Rome, back many, many, many hundreds and even thousands of years ago. So what is a legend? A legend is a story about a person or event from the past that is believed by many people to be true, true in part or in whole but you cannot prove it to be absolutely true. Some events and people in legends may also be greatly exaggerated or described as larger or greater than they really were or could have been. Um, legends are stories that have been passed down orally. They can be passed down in writing, and they sometimes offer an explanation of how something big came to be. So this is Romulus and Remus, um, or Romulus and Remus, and they are who this legend is about. Um, this legend is believed by some to explain how the city of Rome was founded. How did it come to be? There are many different versions of this legend. We're gonna hear one in the read aloud today but there is another version that you're really even going to read about in your student reader. Um, and it will give slightly different details about the same legend of Romulus and Remus. Um, and if you were to go outside of these two versions, you would continue to hear different, slightly, slightly different versions of this story. You might want to compare and contrast them. Um, in this legend, you're going to hear about two Roman gods, Mars and um, Tibernia, Tiberinus, Tiberinus. And we're going to remind students that components of a civilization are religion or a set of beliefs and practices. People in ancient times often developed religion as they sought to explain how things came to be or how things happened in nature, such as thunder and lightning and tides of the oceans and the seasons. The ancient Romans believed in beings called gods and goddesses. The gods were thought to be male beings and goddesses were thought to be female beings. And the ancient Greeks and Romans had beliefs in very similar gods and goddesses. They borrowed from each other. You're going to learn more about these Roman and Greek gods and goddesses in read alouds. Let me go back just a little bit and remind you of the six components of a civilization because that's super important in one of in the explanation of why we would study ancient Roman civilization or ancient Greek civilization. We want to know these things. Uh, what is a civilization? Well, it's a group of people living together in well-organized way. And in order to be considered a civilization, you really have to have six different components. Can you name them? How many of them can you name? We'll try to go over them every day, but see how quickly you can learn these. 
people in civilization build cities. People in civilizations have a writing system. People in civilizations have leaders and some type of laws. People in civilizations practice some type of religion. People in civilizations grow their own food by farming. And people in civilizations have different jobs. Not everybody has to be a farmer to feed their own family. Some people can be farmers and trade what they grow for the brick makers. And when they need to build a house, they can trade their food, get some bricks and build their house. Um, other people would be bakers. They would bake the bread for the other people and you could purchase that. So see if you can remember tomorrow how many of those components of a civilization. We'll come back, try to come back to them every day. But let's go ahead and hear, hear about this legend of Romulus and Remus. Early on a chilly spring morning, a man picked his way through the tall grass along the bank of the river Tiber. In his arms, he carried a large basket in which two infant brothers were bundled up in blankets. From the basket, the two infants could see the blue sky dotted with puffy clouds. They could hear the birds singing from perches in the trees, and they could hear the rushing river Tiber, which at that time was full to the brim with the melted snow of the northern mountains. The twins were too young to understand that the man carrying them was a servant of their wicked uncle. Their uncle's name was Amulius, King Amulius. Out of jealousy, King Amulius, or perhaps out of the fear that one day these handsome twins would become too powerful and try to take his crown, the king had sent his servant to kill the baby boys. Hmm. So according to legend, the twins were the sons of the Roman god of war, Mars. So here's the god of war looking down. Here's the king sending off the twins with this soldier. But the servant was a good man. He had a wife and two children of his own. With one look into those boys' eyes, the servant knew that he could never bring himself to kill them. The servant sat there in the grass on the riverbank all morning, thinking about what he should do and knowing that the king would kill him if he ever discovered that he had failed to do what the king asked of him. What is this servant going to do? Suddenly, above the sound of the rushing river, the servant heard a number of men on horses nearby. Peering through the weeds, he saw some of the king's soldiers. Perhaps they were just out on a routine patrol, or perhaps the king had sent them to make sure the dark deed had been done. Either way, the soldiers would think it strange to find a man there with two babies in a basket, so the servant wasn't going to take any chances. Seeing no alternative, he placed the basket, babies and all, into the rushing waters of the river Tiber. Take a look at this river. Do you see here? Hmm. He watched as they floated and bobbed slowly along the bank of the river. But a moment later, the basket was caught in the river current and away it went, rocking and reeling out of sight downriver. The soldiers thought nothing of the man they saw standing there on the bank. They nodded and said, good morning. The servant waved back and acted as though he was just undressing to take a morning bath. Little did they know how his heart raced because he had defied the king's orders. But he had also saved two young lives and for that he felt happy. The twins remained calm and rather content as they floated downriver. Water splashed on them and soaked them, but thank thankfully the basket did not sink. 
Mm, my goodness, skipping, skipping. Is that where I am? Yes, sorry. Eventually the basket wound its way into some tall, strong reeds and there it sat. Some say it was a river god, Tipernia, Ty, uh, Tiberinus, who must have protected and saved them, cradling their basket boat in his watery hands and gently guiding them to shore, where they fell asleep in the shade. It so happened that a mama wolf was having a drink of water there at the river. She saw the basket and its precious cargo. The wolf had a tender heart and took pity on them. The wolf dragged the basket to her den, and when the boys awoke, she fed them the same milk she fed her puppies. The twins remained in the den for a few days until finally the mama wolf saw a shepherd leading his flock of sheep down to the river. When the shepherd saw the wolf, he instinctively held up his staff to warn the wolf that he was ready to fight to save his sheep. But the wolf was not interested in his sheep on this day. Instead, she dragged the basket closer to the shepherd and then darted away. So that's the river god. And here's the wolf. Puzzled, the shepherd went up to the basket, saw the handsome baby boys, and decided to take them home. What does this legend have to do with Rome, you might ask? Well, these twin brothers were named Romulus and Remus, and they became quite famous. They were raised by the shepherd, and they grew up to be shepherds themselves. When the boys grew older, they decided to find their home. When they found out that King um, Amul Amulius had tried to have them killed, they got their revenge by fighting and overthrowing him. The legend of Romulus and Remus was very important to the ancient Romans and later to the history of the country of Italy as well. The fact that the wolf did not try to harm the boys but instead saved them and took care of them like her own pups is a very favorite part of the story. Ancient Romans decorated some of their buildings with statues and other types of artwork depicting this famous she-wolf and the twin brothers. At the time of Romulus and Remus, around 753 BC, now BC, do you remember, is before the Common Era or before Christ, the area that is now Italy was broken up into a lot of little kingdoms with lots of kings who were constantly bickering or fighting with one another. Romulus and Remus had enough of those other kings, so they set off with some of their friends to build their own city near the river Tiber, where they had once been rescued by the she-wolf. Can you guess what that city was named? Perhaps it could have been named Reem after Remus, but that's not how the story goes. Instead, it was named Rome after Romulus. So what happened to Remus? Well, Remus and Romulus could not agree on where exactly to build their new city. They agreed that they needed to build it on a hill. There were seven large hills in the area that's now Rome. Remus wanted to build the city on one hill, but Romulus wanted to build it on another hill. They bickered for a while and then decided to ask the gods for help. Each brother went to his preferred hilltop and waited for a sign from the gods. Late in the afternoon, Remus finally got his sign. Six big vultures flew in a circle above his head. Surely, thought Remus, the gods have sent these birds as a sign that he should that we should build our city here. A few minutes later, Romulus saw not six, but 12 vultures flying overhead as he waited on his chosen hilltop. Unfortunately, this is no way to settle the argument. Remus believed the gods had chosen his hill because they had sent the birds to him first. Romulus 
had seen more birds and therefore believed that the signs were in his favor. The brothers could not agree, so they went their separate ways to see who could build the best city. And a few weeks later, Remus came to visit his brother. Romulus had been working hard all day and night with his friends to build his city into a strong fortress with tall walls. However, it takes a long time to build strong walls. Remus laughed as he stepped easily over the wall Romulus had started to build. Well, it seems I found a way into your grand city after all. That wasn't so difficult, Remus jeered, kicking a stone off the wall. This made Romulus very angry, and they started to fight. Forgetting that they were brothers in those moments, they fought with all their might. After some time, Remus fell to the ground and died. When Romulus realized what he had done, he cried because he did not intend to kill his brother. This is the legend of how the great city of Rome was founded. This legend, as sad as it may seem, is what many ancient Roman children may have been told as they were being tucked into bed at night. And this legend is still being told in its various forms today. The story's end had an important message, message for the Roman people. Romans will protect their beloved city of Rome. For protection, the Romans surrounded themselves with strong walls not just in Rome, but everywhere they settled. This picture was taken in present-day England. Look at that wall. It's hundreds and hundreds of miles from the city of Rome, but here you can see the ruins of Hadrian's Wall. It's a large wall built by the Romans, to guard against invaders from the north. Hadrian's Wall stretched from coast to coast in England, 73 miles. It was about eight feet wide and 12 feet high. Hadrian's Wall was certainly not built in a day. Romulus's beloved city would become the capital of a very powerful empire. You're gonna hear much more about this memorable city and the empire over the next few days. So why did the king, Amulius, banish Romulus and Remus when they were babies, and why did he want them killed? Well, King Amulius feared that the twins would grow up to threaten his power because they were believed to be the sons of Mars, the god of war. And what contribution to Roman mythology do we have today that is related to astronomy? Well, we have Mars. A planet in our solar system is named after the Roman god of war. Hmm, that's a contribution that the ancient Romans left us. Why did the servant defy the king's orders to have the boys killed? Well, the servant was a good man and he had children of his own, he was acting instinctively to do the right thing. Because he saw no other alternative or choice, what did the servant do with Romulus and Remus? He placed the two boys in a basket in the river Tiber and hoped that they would float away to safety. Where is the river Tiber? Well, the River Tiber is right there near where ancient Rome is. And which Roman god is believed to be the god of this river? Tiberinus. Okay. Let's go back this way. I'm going to scoot back to one of these pictures because we want to talk about this for a second. What do you see in this image, and what words can you use to describe the setting, characters, and plot in this scene? The setting is where and when a story takes place. 
The characters are who is in the story, and the plot are the events that happen in a story in order. So what's the setting? In the river, Tiber, right? Who are the characters? Well, I see baby Romulus and Remus. I see the river god, Tiberinus. I see the wolf who was coming down to get a drink and rescued those babies. There are also some um, incidental characters, part of the setting. The birds, the turtle and the fish lets you know exactly where it was happening. That's the setting. Where and when a story takes place is the setting. The characters, who it is, and the plot is the events that are happening in the story. So after the king ordered Romulus and Remus to be killed, a servant spared them, placed them in a basket in the river Tiber. Romulus and Remus floated down the rushing river and were protected by the river god Tiberinus. A tender mama wolf, having a drink of water nearby, saw the boys. So what happened to Romulus and Remus next? The next event in the plot? They safely reached the riverbank in a basket, and a tender mama wolf took Romulus and Remus to her den and cared for them, as she would have cared for her very own baby pups. Did Romulus and Remus stay with the wolf forever? No. So what happened next? How did they move on? How does the plot move on? Well, the wolf left the twins with a shepherd, and the shepherd then raised the twin boys as part of his own family. What happened once Romulus and Remus became adults? Hmm. They found out that King Amulius had tried to kill them and they overthrew him and decided to build their own city by the Tiber River, which is where he had tried to drown them. So did Romulus and Remus agree upon where to build their fortress city, or did they begin bickering? They definitely began bickering. Do you ever bicker with your brother or sister? It's a typical behavior. So why did... Um, what did they decide to do? They decided to build separate cities on separate hills. So then why was Rome named after Romulus instead of after Remus? Well, because Remus died and Romulus was the one whose city remained. So why is this story of Romulus and Remus considered a legend rather than a nonfiction account? Well, a legend is a story often greatly exaggerated about a person or event in the past. It's believed by many people to be true, sort of in part or in whole, but it cannot be proven to be absolutely true. A nonfiction account is generally proven to be true with facts and evidence. So why do you think this legend of Romulus and Remus is important to the Romans? And how does the Tiber River play an important part in that story? Think about that question. Why is the legend of Romulus and Remus important to Romans? And how does the river Tiber play an important part in that story? <laughs>